Hey, welcome everyone. I'm Laura Burns of Radical Body Love Yoga. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome for the first time. Extra jazz hands for you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about yoga props. So yoga props might be something that you know about and maybe something that you don't know anything about. Maybe you've seen them, you don't really know how to use them. Maybe you don't really know how they could help you. Maybe you think you don't need them and they couldn't help you. Well, I, I'm here to tell you that everyone can benefit from yoga props, even if you are a seasoned, long-time practitioner of yoga. There are so many props that can enrich your practice, that can provide extra support and relaxation for you. And if you're new to yoga, 100% you definitely need yoga props. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in, uh, how flexible you are, how strong you are, what your abilities are, um, you need them. So let's get into it. I'm going to show you some props and then I will um, demonstrate how you use them uh, in actual yoga poses. The first thing I want to tell you about is not actually like thought of as a prop, but it's really helpful for me because um, I'm a sweaty person. <laughs> Are you a sweaty person? Because <laughs> uh, I sure as heck am. So what I'm going to show you is this tiny bag. Can you see? I'm trying to shade the light. It's not working. Okay, so you can kind of see that faint writing, Aurora or Aurora. I don't really know how to say the name. That's the name of the company. They make all kinds of things. Um, I have one of their yoga mats. They make like yoga, carrying bags, and other props. Um, I think I have one of their towels as well. This is a rosin bag. Ready? <laughs> so normally you wouldn't hit it that hard. I just wanted to make a dramatic puff of uh, stuff. So basically it's powder. Um, and so if you have ever seen uh, ballerinas dip the toe of their point shoes into a rosin box, it helps them to not slip when they're on point. This is the same idea. So for example, you would just kind of, you know, touch the bag back and forth, rub it around. Now my hands are very dry. Um, so then if I'm on the mat, if before, you know, maybe in downward facing dog, uh, my hands were slipping forward because they were a little sweaty, um, this would help you to get some grip here. If your feet are really sweaty, which is a thing, that's a real thing that happens, um, you could even put some on the bottoms of your feet so that they would not be slipping. Um, it's just a nice thing to have around uh, for those times when it's either hot in the room or you're working really hard or whatever and you find that you're sweating a lot and slipping around on your mat, which is annoying, number one, and number two, actually dangerous. So it's not expensive. I like having it around. I don't always use it, but every once in a while it comes in handy and I'm then really grateful that I have it. Um, so I will try to find it online and link it below in the box. I'm going to try to put links in the box. None of them are affiliate links, nothing, you know, like that. Um, they may not even be the same version of what I have, but they will be similar versions just in case you want to go explore online and buy something for yourself. Again, not sponsored. Although if there are any prop companies that want to send me something, I'll take it. All right. So after that, I want to show you another inexpensive, awesome, versatile, amazing item. And this is a yoga strap. This one <laughs> is not the ideal strap because it's not super long. So I can just barely, it's about my wingspan. Um, I have longer ones, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> they probably got borrowed and never returned. So this has a buckle. This one is plastic. So this is, here are the reasons why this is not ideal. Uh, I like a metal clasp, um, and usually it's like two D-rings um, or O-rings. Metal, I just uh, feel is more durable than this plastic, which can easily break. Um, although honestly, for most use, plastic is probably fine. I'm just always looking to buy like the best version of something that's going to last me the longest so I don't have to replace it. And then this, the actual fabric of the strap is a cotton webbing. This is ideal for me. Um, I like the cotton ones because they're softer. Like see how this like, 
I can scrunch it up and it it moves nicely. Some of them are like this thicker nylon that just doesn't bend and squish and everything as well. Um, plus, I feel like when I launder these, they just come out nicer. Um, so this one is probably a six foot strap, maybe. Do you think my wingspan is six feet? <laughs> I don't know, probably six feet. Um, I would tell you if you were gonna go buy a strap right now to get a 10 foot strap, because that extra length really comes in handy. It's never gonna get in your way when you're using a strap, so if you don't need that full length, it's not gonna bother you, but when you need the length, you'll really wish it was there if you don't have the 10 foot strap. <laughs> Hello. So I'm gonna show you how to use this strap. Um, here's one way that I use in my classes a lot. Holding the strap, the middle goes around the ball of one of your feet, and then standing up tall, nice and balanced. Shifting weight onto your supporting leg, bending the knee, and then wrapping the strap around your hand so it's really stable around your hands. Extending the leg out, and then raising it up if you want, or keeping it low. The idea here that the strap helps hold the weight of your leg so you can lift the leg, but also get a little support here, being able to stay in this pose a little longer. You can also put both ends of the strap together and bring the leg out. So, strap. There, I mean, oh my gosh, there's so many things you can do with a strap. For stretching, you can do this using it to help bring your hands closer together. You can use it to engage the muscles. So here, I'm just pulling on each side, forcing my arm muscles to really engage and work. <sighs> Pressing out on each side. Ooh, I feel that. And it's much more effective than, say, trying to press out with just my arms. So here I feel the engagement, but it's not nearly as much as when I pushed out with my hands using this strap. So, I mean, maybe I'll do more videos on each prop really showing all the things, but just to give you a basic idea, there's a ton you can do with the strap. It really helps you seated when you're stretching. Um, so it just has a little metal cap on the end that's nice so it's not going to fray. So yeah, these are super strong. If you don't have um, a yoga strap or you don't want to spend money, you can totally use like an old fabric belt or two, you know, belted together. Uh, any like long strip of material that's not stretchy. You don't want this to stretch. You want it to be strong and hold the weight of various body parts um, and hold and take the pressure. Ooh, that feels good. All right, yoga strap, yoga strap. All right. Moving on, next up, yoga blocks. I'm feeling cheesy today, y'all. <laughs> so these are yoga blocks. This is a standard size block right here. If you were gonna buy just one size, I would tell you to get this one. It's nice and thick here. This is probably about four inches tall. They do make this thinner version, so you can see. So some people like that. If you're a beginner, if you're just learning how to use props, if you need a lot of stability, go with the thicker one because when it's on the floor, and I'll show you this in just a second, when you're on the floor pressing down, this is very stable and this can feel a little wobbly. So a really great example of how to use a block is when you come into forward fold to so stretch up, <sighs> exhaling down, hands coming to the blocks, in forward fold. So here you can see the skinny one, here you can see the fat one. This is what I was talking about. So if you're bringing your hands down here, I'm very stable here. Like it, I really have to work hard to make this move. This one I barely have to move and it kind of rocks back and forth. So it just depends on how much sta uh, stability and um, you need from your block, how much pressure you're going to be putting on it. There's a lot of things you do with your block where you would want that stability. That's why I recommend if you're only going to get one size to get this thicker size. So next, a blanket. So this is a yoga blanket, but y'all, you don't need a yoga blanket. You need any kind of blanket that is around the same size, and I'm going to unfurl it 
completely so you can see the size. It's not going to fit in frame, but I can kind of show you. So the width is about wingspan. The length is about wingspan and a half. So kind of a lap-sized blanket that you might have on the couch. Um, so what you want is something with a tight weave. You don't want a really loose weave because you want it to fold up just like how I'm folding it now and provide loft um, so that when you sit on it, it brings your hips up off the floor. When you put it under your head, it gives you some cushioning and it doesn't have big holes for your fingers <laughs> to jam through. And I say all of this from experience. <laughs> So here you can see the tight weave. No fingers are getting through that, no way. Um, this one technically is a yoga blanket. I bought it online. If you wanna buy it online, go for it. There are lots of different ones. Like the Mexican yoga blanket is like the classic yoga blanket. I have one of those somewhere. Um, but you know what? Yoga doesn't need to cost a lot of money. You don't need to spend a lot of money on props. Unless you just have money to burn and you want to buy new, pretty, awesome things, then go for it. It's up to you. Um, I just always want to hammer home that you don't need to spend money to practice yoga. You probably have everything you need already in your house, minus a yoga mat. And depending on what kind of floor you have, um, what kind of access to mats at studios you have, you may not even need to buy your own mat for a long time. So, that being said, um, I want to show you now one of the greatest props, um, and that is a bolster. This is my baby. Hello. <laughs> I'm holding my baby. All right, so bolsters are dense pillows that you can use. They usually have some kind of a handle for easy carrying. Um, they come in a bunch of different sizes. I have a few that I will show you, but they're used for a variety of different things, really. Some people only use them for Shavasana or the deep relaxation pose in order to like prop their body up in the most comfortable position, but they can also be used during your home practice, um, you know, during seated poses or more supine poses. There are a lot of things that you can do with bolsters besides just relaxing on them. So this is a really common size. It's probably, what, two, two feet? Y'all, I don't know measurements. You can see, compared to my shoulders, how big it is. A little bigger than my shoulders. And this one is thin. So you can see, it's not super thick. If you are, okay, if your body type is very small, if you're a thin person, if you don't weigh a lot, then this might be the only kind of bolster that you need, unless you get a round one. Um, for my purposes, because I have a large body, I weigh a lot. So when I sit on it, it's going to compress down. So this is good for some seated things um, and definitely for when I'm laying down. But sometimes I want something a little thicker, a little firmer for certain things that I do um, when I'm seated. And so when I want that, then I grab this guy. <laughs> so this Mamma Jamma has two handles, which I love because it makes it so easy to pick up. I don't have to think about it. I can just grab any side. Um, and uh, that former, the black one, and this one both have removable covers so you can take them off and wash them, which is great because sometimes you're gross. Um, so this one is a really firm, look, I'm like pressing. Whew. Okay, this is, um, oh, what's it called? Like the Max, Max Fill or something like that. I'll find a link to this. I super recommend this bolster. I got it from yogaaccessories.com. I know uh, Mark the Fat Yogi, he got one of these too. I think he likes it a lot. Um, again, not an affiliate. I just really recommend these bolsters. If you are looking for something really firm that's not going to just get squished down, that's going to continue to provide you that support, or if you're just looking for something taller um, and you're not you know, worried about like squishing it down, but you just want a taller bolster. This is a great one. It's really, really good quality. I've had this one for like four years now and um, it's like brand new. It's so good, so good. Okay, 
the last style that I'm going to show you is round. Look at this. This one happens to be pretty. It has this uh, embroidery on the end, which is nice. Um, also has a zipper so the cover can be removed. Has a handle on this end. This one also is pretty firm. Not quite as firm as the green one, but like close. Pretty close. So when would you use a round one versus a rectangular one? It just depends on your body. So if you're sitting on the ground and you just want to elevate your hips, I would use one of those two rectangular ones that I just showed you. Um, if you are laying down on your back for Shavasana and you want to prop up your knees or your thighs, the round ones are great because they just perfectly fit in that curve um, underneath your knees. But the rectangular ones are also good for that. Um, these are really nice. These are really good if you are going to sit it down this way and then sit astride it with one leg on each side. I'll show you that in a second. You're probably like, what? Um, I like these round ones because they're a little more narrow. And so if you're like me, when you have big thighs, you have less space in between your thighs to sit astride something. So trying to sit astride this big green one would be much harder for me than to sit on this one, which is more narrow. So I'll demo that in just a second. The last one that I want to show you is hilarious. Okay, so you know how I said <laughs> you don't have to spend a lot of money to practice yoga. Well, these bolsters are expensive, and I'm just going to tell you that right now. The little black one from the beginning is less expensive. That's a Gaian bolster. Um, that actually was, just to be transparent, um, that black bolster was sent to me along with some other props to review and take pictures with, but... Um, you know, opinions are my own. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a perfectly good bolster. Um, if you're looking for a small rectangular bolster, I would recommend it. It's nice. Okay. If you don't want to spend any money, here's an option for you. You can make your own bolster. <laughs> so I'm laughing because this one um, is not going to win any beauty pageants, but... Um, it does the best it can. <laughs> so you'll see here on the ends where I've sewn it up. This is what I'm talking about. I didn't have any thread that was a better color. I was actually going to make a cover to go on this thing. Uh, but after I made it, I was over it. And so I never made it to the constructing a cover phase. So it just <sighs> ended up like this. But I wish that I had taken that extra step to make a cover. Because this thing is covered in cat hair and lint and stuff and um, there's no way for me to clean it because this cover doesn't come off which was the whole reason I was going to make a cover but you know live and learn it was free so I'm just saying all this to tell you that if you want to make your own bolster you can I just wrapped up layers of what's in here it's been so long now um, there's like a wool poncho a fleece lap quilt or lap blanket um, oh, an old beach towel that was like ribbed and gross. I don't know, some other things. If you have random stuff around your house, it's like old, you don't care about it anymore, you don't wear it, you don't use it, roll it up, cover it in some fabric, sew up the ends, and you have a bolster. So this thing is pretty firm. I mean, it's pretty good. It's not a looker, but it works. Um, so yeah, this didn't cost me a single penny. I had everything already in my house. I just literally rolled it up into a tube and sewed a piece of fabric around it. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. It's a great way to um, dip your feet into, into the bolster pool. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> without having to spend money um, to see, okay, I really like this bolster idea. I think I would actually use this. Let me go ahead and spend the money and buy, you know, a nice professionally made bolster. But you know what? This is still my rotation. I do still use it, so not to knock it. So here is the thin black bolster, and I'm just going to come down to the floor and sit on it. So I'm just sitting cross-legged here. It brings my hips up, making it a little easier to sit on the floor. Um, it feels nice. I mean, I'm squishing the material down, but it's still very, very, very padded. Um, it's not like me sitting on it means that 
you know, I'm just hitting the floor. Um, for some people though, they need a little more height and that's when this guy would come in handy. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when I sit on that. So just to move a little to the side so you can see the compression of this and just the size. I think this might be a little um, narrower than the green one or maybe not. I don't know. Um, so depending on the size of your body, you might want one of these small ones or you may say, I'm only going to buy one bolster. Let me get the big guy. So I'm up on the green one now. I'll just move again to the side like before to show you the amount of compression. It keeps me higher off the ground. Um, so depending on your body, on what you need in terms of height off the ground, you might want uh, this taller one that is a little more firm. So now I'm going to show you um, the round one under your knees in Shavasana. So this round one is perfect for going under your knees um, in Shavasana or anytime you're looking to lay down on your back and be really supported. <sighs> so you can keep it right under your knees or smoosh it back a little farther also under your thighs. So here it's really supporting under my knees and my thighs, allowing my low back to drop down to the floor. <sighs> Feels good. If you have trouble with laying on your back because your low back starts feeling like it's pressing up away from the floor and is uncomfortable, put something under your knees to elevate them. Really, usually <laughs> the higher the better. The more your knees come up, the more your low back is going to come down. Your pelvis tilts to a nice neutral position. So this is what I was talking about when I talked about sitting astride the bolster. I've got the bolster between my legs uh, perpendicular to my body. Now you can see because I have thick luscious thighs, there's just not a ton of room in between them when I sit like this. So if I were trying to do this around one of the rectangular bolsters, it would be a tighter fit to try to get my legs around it. But this round one is really perfect for it. So here, I'm just sitting back onto my heels, letting my quad stretch, <sighs> stretching across the tops of my feet. It feels really good. <sighs> and I have some support from the bolster, but because it gives, it allows me to sink lower as my muscles stretch. You can do the same thing using a block. The thing with the blocks is that they don't give. So as your muscles stretch, they don't, the blocks don't give, so it doesn't allow you to sink lower. Um, whereas the bolster does. So it's nice because it lets you continue to stretch. The block is much more supportive, so it would maybe keep me right here. Whereas with the bolster, I can sink down. Um, all right, so I think that's all the stuff I was gonna show you. I have some other props, but I don't wanna get into that today. I just wanna stick to the basics, um, stuff that you would use if you were just getting into yoga or just getting into using Props. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope that this video helped you kind of get a better idea of what some basic yoga props are, how you might use them, how they might help your practice, um, how you might DIY them at home. Um, yeah, and then check the description box. I will link to as many um, examples of these kinds of things as possible. Not an affiliate. Um, comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all these props. Um, do you already use props? Does this make you maybe want to try props? <laughs> what do you think? And um, I'll see you all next time. Bye.